flown just one and a half hours east from Thailand to neighboring Cambodia. These neighbors have little in common, but we're eager to see what makes Cambodia so unique. If Thailand is the culture shock, Cambodia is the culture electrocution. Cambodia is still slowly recovering from years of civil war and poverty, and both are still very evident today. Justin and I are dropping everything and just gonna travel the world for a year. I gave up quite a bit of stuff to do this. I just always thought there's definitely something missing, like traveling. That travel bug gets in you, and it's got you. One whole year goes by in a blink. You know, all it takes is a border to separate a country, and on each side of that border is a different beast. You look at the map of the world, and you see these countries that neighbor each other, and you, you figure, well, you know, in the same region, they're going to be kind of similar. Just because they're in the same region of the Earth, it doesn't mean they're the same country. Typically, Cambodia drives on the right side of the road. We've now taken over one of the oncoming lanes with a whole bunch of other traffic. We're clearly across the solid line. It's just more of a situation of you do what you gotta do. There are zero rules for the road here in Cambodia. I'm beginning to think there are zero rules, period. Check out this gun range. Apparently on the outskirts of town, this gun range allows you to fire a plethora of weapons. This is your menu, broken down into rifles, handguns, and machine guns. So what, what kind of gun is this? Tommy gun. Tommy gun? Yeah. Got my Tommy gun. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> Bang for your buck, it goes quick. AK-47. Do I have to lean forward? Yeah. A lot of kick? I'm just shaking like a leaf of the adrenaline. Kind of mixed emotions, you know, we just got off the plane, we know that this place is a bit lawless, a place where you can come out and, and fire just about any weapon in the book. As long as there's a price tag attached, then they don't mind, you know, organizing it for you. Shooting off this M30 here, and this is a bullet. Woohoo! Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> that is a serious rush, man. I don't know what to think. This is pretty big, and watching Justin fire it off was pretty insane. You got him. You got him that time. <laughs> being behind it, the back blast, like just of just the air, it's just, it's just pop, pop, pop. Like it's, it's like energy. being in front of a huge subwoofer. You can just imagine the damage that does. One of the options on the menu is to throw a grenade. I've always been kind of scared to do that. Once it's thrown, what mm. do I do? Yeah. I would like that. Yeah, but once once I throw it, do I no, duck? It's okay, it's okay. All right, all right. We all gonna get wet? Fire in the hole. It's on. <laughs> oh my God. I'm glad I did it. I mean, that was a huge thrill, you know? That the hands were shaking and the blood was pumping. The range safety here seems really lax. Yeah. Like, as soon as you're done a weapon, some kid runs out to change your target. I think maybe this is just an indicator then of, you know, how, 
how maybe lawless this country is. You know, it's kind of the wild, wild west of Asia sort of thing. So wild, wild east. Wild, wild east. We're on our way to meet up with a good friend of mine, Sororan, who I uh, went to college with. And he is Cambodian, he's here in Cambodia at this time, so he told us to meet up with him at the new market. I have no idea where he's at. I never met the guy, so I don't know what he looks like or anything. We're in the central market. I mean, that's as good of directions as I've got, so. I think we're gonna get lost in here. I think we just go through here and get out of this. In the end, I guess it was a lot easier for Sororan to find us than for us to find Sororan. Oh, it's like, hey, hey, hey. Come, come. Two Westerners kind of stick out like a sore thumb in this area. Seeing Cambodia at his hands is really going to be something special because he was born here. His family went through all of the trials and tribulations of what's really a very recent war. Here we go. Guys, right now we're standing at the Tul Slang Prison. Basically, it was a school where the kids were educated before, and the Khmer Rouge actually turned into a place where they tortured and killed people that they thought were against their regime. Over 17,000 people were murdered and tortured here. This first building here, Building A, has uh, a number of different rooms that were turned into interrogation rooms and ultimately torture rooms as well. There's the, the iron frame beds that have been left, and in some instances, um, also some of the tools of torture. Some of them even have photographs of victims from, I guess, when the Vietnamese came in. It hits very hard right off the bat and allows you to really feel something, as opposed to just going to your run-of-the-mill museum and, and seeing artifacts under glass. This is the actual place, and I mean, this is as much a cemetery as it is a museum. The people that we're traveling with have all been involved with it. Everybody had an aunt, an uncle, father, mother, brother, or sister that were either killed or tortured or were involved in the slave camps. I think this place is really important for any visitor to Cambodia to make an effort to come here. Already, I could leave here today with the utmost respect and understanding of what they've gone through. Despite all of that, Life goes on, and that really takes a certain type of people to get through it, and the Khmer people have. This is not what Cambodia is all about, and I hope when you are out there, you know, meeting the people of Cambodia, you would understand more as to why they are the way they are today. It's far more raw and rustic here. It just seems Further back in time, even in the big city, like even in Phnom Penh, it's not the kind of city that Bangkok is, you know. The further we get away from the airport, the further we're going back in time. This entourage of Sororans is, is gonna become really necessary too. Traveling in numbers and traveling with people who can speak the language and help you get out of predicaments is gonna be essential for us. Now we got a whole van full of people yeah. to make sure that we can get across and back. Cambodia. The great Cambodian road trip begins right now. <laughs> I'm going to introduce the crew that we have with us for, the, for our Cambodia road trip. Um, we have Lou. He's a friend of my uncle's. He's one of the drivers that is going to be doing most of the driving for the whole trip. Dara, who is our driver and DJ. Uncle Sok. This is my, bu my buddy, my uncle. The name Sok stands for the day Friday because he was born on Friday. So they named him Sok. My cousin Vana. He's our uh, technical guy. He's a mechanic, so in case we have anything wrong with the car or anything like that. This is my uncle, uh, Mut, our animal expert. And we're just a couple of Westerners who climbed into the same van. <laughs> There's no such thing as personal space because of this road trip because we are all packed in here like sardines. Most people don't speak the same language as me, but we all have the same objective, and that's to see as much as we can of Cambodia. 
And these guys have never even seen this place before, and they live here. And so it's a first for us, and it's a first for them. It, it's something that's amazing, and I, I'm glad that uh, we decided to do it this way. Maybe the only way to really see the true heart of Cambodia. Right here marks the end of the paved road. As you can see behind us, it turns all to a dusty red sand road. We've traveled over the only pavement. So I think we're just gonna keep going for a couple more hours. As soon as it gets dark, we'll, we'll just stop, find a place to stay for the night and call it a day and get up early again the next morning to continue. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cause you don't, you don't wanna drive on these roads at night. There's, there's bandits and stuff that, that's known to, to come out of the woods and, and jump. Well, the people that are traveling down these roads at night. What can you expect from the bandits? Like, what? Will they just rob you? That's about it, or will they do more than that? When it's nighttime, they can easily pull you aside to any of these wooded areas where nobody would see what what could happen. Right. And take all your money and kill you. Wow. There was a guy back there saying that, oh, one of our cameras alone can buy him a new car. It's a very easy thing for us to do to just quit for the night and. God knows yeah. we're gonna have plenty of, of driving anyway, so yeah. I don't mind yeah. stopping and having something to eat, having something to drink, and Definitely. calling it a day, so. Definitely. All right, let's keep moving keep then. Yep. There's a really weird, eerie feeling sometimes when you're out on these, these back roads and you feel a million miles from nowhere. Well, all that has to happen is for a tire to go or for the engine to fail and you're stranded in the middle of bandit country. Lumber gets smuggled through the border to our neighboring countries daily, and all the people that come and smuggle those things here aren't the best people. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous. Like, this is uh, kind of not what I expected. Everybody on this trip has never been down this road except for one person, and that one person is saying it's pretty dangerous. We just noticed that we're, we're starting to hug along the uh, the mighty Mekong River here, so we've had a bit of a look at it. Checking it out, I'm waiting for the sun to, yeah. sun to set so we can get out of here. And just enjoying the company of a couple of young monks here as well. We should be uh, getting somewhere safe. It's quite the setting. It's really quite the setting. I don't know anything about this territory, and there's some bad things that's happened here in recent years, so I'm a little bit nervous. You don't want to be here at night and stuff, so it's scary. This is all new territory for you, but have your parents ever seen any of this? My dad and his brother have, because um, yeah. during the war, this is where they came to seek refuge. My uncle was actually a slave at one of the camps in this area during the war. He was afraid to keep going because he was thought he'd get caught, and that's how he remained in Cambodia. The sun's just about down, we can't push our luck any further. Soron's uh, uncle reiterated to us again while we were down here, please let's not be here after dark, so we're not taking any chances, we're getting out of here. We've arrived in the town of Protai. Got a nice place right on the, uh, the Mekong River here. We found a hotel, the sun is well, gone, and it's almost dark, so we made it just in the nick of time, I think. <laughs> Ain't too bad of a safe house. 15 bucks? Or yeah. 12 bucks? No, I think this room's 15, so we're really splurging. I'm actually really surprised after all the backcountry we went through and the roads we went through. This is an That's oasis. Awesome. We say we spent a little bit more on beer and dinner tonight, then. <laughs> Got a nice early start again this morning and we're hoping to be able to make it to Ratanakari probably by mid to late afternoon today if everything goes well. At the side of the road that we're driving along, we're starting to see some evidence of the clear cutting of this uh, illegal lumber industry that's going on up in this area. It's just safer to be traveling during the daytime, but you can still see all the evidence of it.
This was probably cut just a couple weeks ago and it, what they do is they just burn it so that it's easier for them to clear it afterwards and sell the land as farmland to the farmers. They've already taken the trees but all the grass that's left is then burnt up and all that's left is, is just charred land. It's a complete habitat destruction that way and it affects you know everything from insects to birds to I mean even these water buffalo that are coming through here have come right to the road's edge in order to get the only patch of grass that's left. And these people are, are desperate to make money. You know, they have to feed the family. And so this is the, the obvious thing. They have the trees in their own backyard. They're worth a lot of money. You cut them down to make it. Time to expose these boys to a little bit of North American culture. Bought a little magazine here called Thongs. Dude! Check this out. Yeah. Keep going, y'all. Keep going. Yeah. Bam bam. Yeah, they only have the advertisers. Wait till they get to the features. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Thumbs up for that. Hey, thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> it's a guy's trip. Van Lung kind of represents the gateway to where we want to start to explore to try to find some of the indigenous hill tribe that are in this area. It's going to take a little bit of poking around this town, I think, to kind of figure out where we're able to get into to try to find some of these tribes. I think Sroren's onto something. I think he's talking to someone who might know something about uh, the tribes around here. So we'll wait and see what kind of information he digs out. I just found a guide that's going to take us around for tomorrow. They have. Um, these indigenous people that still live there till this day, then they'll be able to show us around um, their village and how they live and, and so forth. I asked around how old the guys were, and he started asking them, and then they didn't know. And like, we mean they don't know. He's like, well, they don't, they they don't know when their birthday is. And I said, Scott, I'm like, dude, we gotta have a birthday for these guys so they have an actual birthday. That's the funny thing. I have no idea who's getting the bigger culture shock out of this trip, us or them. <laughs> so it's, they're gonna be. One years old. <laughs> I think it's really funny. I don't know why. I also think that's, that's funny. <laughs> one years old. These guys have no idea what's coming. He's never seen one before. He heard of it, but he's never seen one. They've never had seen A moment like this is really surreal. I mean, a birthday isn't something you forget about. These guys may never have a birthday quite like this ever again. Good <laughs> birthday. So every year on this day will be their birthday. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Can I see the keys? Can I see the keys? No, the keys, keys, keys. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Thanks. Then I just want to give them. Mm. Okay! Yeah! My God! Oh, okay. my driver. I have no idea what's going on right now. If I'm not fit to drive home, nobody's fit to drive home, especially these guys. <laughs> Cambodia will never be the same. It's over. I don't think we can do any more than this. We are we have polluted these guys' minds. We've polluted their bodies. Put it in neutral. We gotta push the damn car to the hotel. I'll drive. I'll drive. No, 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 we're not driving. We gotta push the damn no, thing. No, no, no. I'll, I'll drive. Someone's gotta drive it. Can you just push it? Uh, you steer it. We'll push it. We'll push it. Okay. 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 We got the rhythm, baby. We got the rhythm. It's not the fastest way to get around town, but at least it's a safe. Rough morning for these guys. Uh, we're having breakfast now, and they might be mad at us because they're not even sitting at the same table as us anymore. I was pretty, I was pretty good last night. I was taking it easy. Scott was feeding them beers, so don't blame me. Blame Scott. Oh well. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. Soran's done some poking around town here, and we've got a new friend on board who's quite confident he can find um, one of the indigenous hill tribes around here. Even though Cambodia is not a very developed country, you know, we still found the need to get further and further away from the major cities. We definitely push our limits as far as we can go. Uh, okay, we make the go. I call the people to come to meeting. just turned up at this uh, indigenous tribe here, which is what we wanted. This is exactly why we came this far out in the first place, in hopes of being able to find something like this. This is really cool. This is really cool. sooner did we get here, everyone sort of welcomed us in and then moved over here. They've got this cow tied up and they're, they're starting to encircle the cow and, and play these uh, like gongs. And something's, I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna, they're gonna kill this cow. Knows. That's the scary thing. Yeah, the cow, cow knows. Cow knows what's going on. The whole time I was like, man, I just hope this cow breaks free because I know what was in store for him. I think the cow knew what was going on, and it was going absolutely crazy. And they just came up and just hacked. It's really brutal. It's really hard to watch, actually. Took like the thing over his head and smashed him over the head a couple times. And... Oh, <laughs> my
Dang, I couldn't watch it. It was hard. It was really hard to watch. It's weird, the perception. I mean, for us, it, it's so hard, but, you know, I'm seeing all of them gather around. They're, they're happy. This is a big day. This is important. It's a sacrifice to bring prosperity, happiness. They've never done anything like that over there in his village, and he's never seen anything like that. This is the first time he's seen it. He's really, <laughs> it was hard for him to, to watch as well. But that's how they kill their animals. Oh. This is tradition. Who are we to, to tell them a different way, you know? They've been living successfully out here for a long, long time, and we have to remember that this is a celebration. For a ceremony like this, that where the whole village is invited, it's once every four years. But different, different individual homes can do it at their house at any time. This is it, eh? This is it. We got some uh, beef and some lime and pepper sauce. I have to admit, after um, watching what we watched, I don't have that much of an appetite, but I think it would be pretty rude to, to not at least try the food that they've prepared for us. It's a pretty big deal. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, I hate to say it, but it's good. <laughs> well, if you enjoy beef, I guess. in Akri and backtracking through bandit country to the town of Schoon and then north to the temples of Angkor and Siem Reap. Four and a half hours into the trip we're nearing a third of the way. And that CD they're playing, it's the same songs over and over again. Do you notice that? It's on repeat? Yeah, yeah. It's like the same four songs over, 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 over. <laughs> We're just stopping briefly in the little town of Schoon, and Schoon is not really unlike any other Cambodian town, with the exception that somebody at some point decided that it would be tasty to eat tarantula. Jeez. Oh my god. Mmm, that's a whole plate of tarantula. How much for the whole plate? Are you gonna eat this tarantula? No, I'm uh, I'm not. We'll all eat a leg. How about everybody eats a no, leg? There's what, no. eight legs? We'll do it like um, like Thanksgiving. I mean, you got a leg, I got a leg. Yeah. And whoever gets the biggest leg, gets to make a wish and it'll come true. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> I guess I... <laughs> you I get guess, the wish. I get the wish. Cheers. What's that up, bro? 
I can see his freaking eyes. I just saw his eyes. The legs I can handle, but the body is gonna be all gushy and mushy and. Yeah. Ah, do it. It's not good. It's not good at all. I just want to swallow it. Let's do it. It's like in my teeth. Where's that girl side pineapple? There she is. <laughs> you buy me pineapple, dude? My hands are got spider guts on it. I mean, this isn't some freak show that's put on for us. It's just some small town in rural Cambodia, and this is what they eat. You eat what's available, and that's available. <laughs> After an extremely long, long day of driving, we've made it here. Anchor Wat, finally. It's just yeah. that easy. No more van. That's all I care about. Bedtime. We are officially at the temples of Angkor. These are the crowning jewels of Cambodia. They appear on the money, they appear on the flag. It's an incredibly important part of the culture and the country, and with good reason, we're already blown away. <laughs> He's amazed that he's here right now, because in, in his lifetime, he thought he's always wanted to, to see it in his own eyes. It's, it's overwhelming, and it's, it's hard to take it all in, because there's so much. It's, it's the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. It's, it's crazy, the roots and stuff, like the roots, the trees, and how nature kind of slowly took back what man has created. <laughs> That's big. Wow. Genye Akok flight. Totally different from what others have told him and what he's used to seeing. He expected everything to be in one piece. One of the side comments that Saron had told me that his uncle said was that it's kind of sad for him not to see so many tourists here, but to see so many Western tourists versus so few uh, Khmer visitors. It was just sad for him to realize that so many people from outside of his country were witnessing stuff that has taken him 42 years to come and see. It feels like one of those big accomplishments, you know, when, when you do a wonder of the world and have that under your belt, it feels big. Did you notice coming in the statuette at the front? The, the Buddha? No, it's Vishnu. That's how old this is, is when there was still like a Hindu influence and like this stuff kind of predates Buddhism. Now yeah. I'm learning some stuff. Anybody who wants to travel the world, travel with this guy. He can teach you a lot of stuff. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? That matches up pretty well, right? Eh? Uh -huh. I don't think it, it's, it's any more obvious than just walking into the very first temple this morning and seeing their faces and seeing how they didn't even really say anything. They didn't say anything to each other. For them to see this for the very first time is incredible. It would be a lot to take in if I was just experiencing this for the first time on my own. To do it with a group who are now good friends and who are our locals here means that much more. It's it's really quite a special moment. Huh? Huh? Now, the fly now, the fly. I'm excited about the palm trees. <laughs> the real, and they have plants on them. You think you'll be back? Never say never. I think I'll be back for sure. <laughs> Just 
just about nearing the end of our road trip at the uh, village of Long Gun. So we're gonna spend a few days there just sort of living the village life. I think it's gonna be really interesting because we're, we're here in time for um, a big party tomorrow. You know, Sororan's here, so they're throwing a big party for him and we get to benefit out of that. We're at my mom's village, right there. Everyone just sort of gathered around as we pulled in here. I think we're a bit of a curiosity. This Justin. All the kids are all excited to see you. They've never seen a Westerner before, so you're the first. You are the first. Yeah. That's why that's why they're standing there just staring at you. <laughs> That's the response I was looking for. We just sat down for dinner here and it's delicious. But I I'm still getting used to the fact that they've all eaten and now they're serving us dinner and watching us. Mine. Hey, one of the first chores of the morning for these kids is to take the cows out to the field for pasture. Easy. Easy, gentle beast. Easy. It's funny because these cows have got to be easily three times the height of these kids. And they, they managed to, to move these cows without too much problem, but... They still the rocks out. <laughs> it's a bit more difficult than you think. Friends, friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These guys will say anything. Whatever you say, they'll say. Pichawala! <laughs> You remember when he gave me a speeding ticket? I remember you. He's so fat, you can't even see his eyes because of fat that goes over his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't even sound like a pig. It's like, it's like a bus or something. I don't know what they're called. They're like wild grapes. That one is sweet, this one is sour. That's sour. <laughs> <laughs> it's not sweet. That's really sour. The sweet one's not sweet. <laughs> she just asked if you guys like Cambodian girls, and if you do, she's got four of them that she'll offer to you. <laughs> yeah. That one. That one. Uh, there's a couple more back there. Scott, one of my cousins that thinks you're hot. <laughs> oh, come on. And that's the, the tractor that pulled in all of the sound system for tonight. This seems a little excessive, maybe, but that's what they've ordered. I have no idea why there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, six, eighteen speakers on a stage. There's probably going to be 100 people here for tonight, for the dance tonight. And there's 18 speakers plus another loud horn on top he's putting up as well. <laughs> we just got out here to try to get people started because this music's been playing for hours. We finished eating and um, like everything else, it kind of seems like we have to initiate, we have to start it. So we got out here and started dancing like idiots. And now they've moved us over towards the table. So I don't know what they want us to do with the table. Where's the roar? 
started is still going and the only way to get some peace and quiet right now is to head up to the temple. We're going to find some sanctuary in the temple. It's about 12 at night, the party is still going on it's about three rice patties away and uh, it's time for me to get a little shut eye so no offense but good night. And I'll see you in the morning. You can cut the lights out if you want. It'd be really nice. Good night, everybody. Well, I guess it's time to pack up this stuff. them one English word but you did. Thank you to all of them so much because uh, we really felt like we were at home. To be honest we really felt at home like I was with my own family so. <laughs> Tell them next time I come back I'll marry somebody. Justin <laughs> <laughs> they want to know which one. I don't know how I'm going to be able to thank Sororan or his family for giving us this opportunity and to try to convey to them that we've really had a life experience here is going to be tough because I don't know if they'll understand. I don't even know if I understand yet. We, uh, we were hoping that we could come in and sort of book a ticket back home to Vancouver. It's bizarre. It's really bizarre. You know, we've booked so many tickets, so many train tickets, plane tickets, buses, everything, you know, and now just sort of paying for uh, a ticket home seems weird. It, I fly to Vancouver and I don't even know if I'm going back home or I'm going back to Hawaii. Hawaii was my home, but now it's not, so I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go to Vancouver. Thanks so much, Sora. Thanks so no much problem. for everything. Anytime. Dude, thanks Anytime. so much, oh, man. It was awesome. Had a blast. You know, it's weird. It, uh, it's coming to an end here. Within a day or two, we'll be back in Canada, and this will be in the history books. I'm facing going home, and, and there's a lot of great things that come along with that. Being able to see my family again, seeing my girlfriend again, and that's a great feeling, but I, I keep trying to think, how would I 
put it all together? Where will I start? What will be the first story I tell? And you know, all you need is is one morning getting up at 5.30 to watch the sunrise over the Ganges River or to get off the plane in a place like Ascension Island and realize where you are on the map for it to just give you so much life and so much inspiration. It's been such an amazing year and I've done so many things, I've seen so many things and it's hard to uh, give it all up to go back to the regular job and all that crap. You get so used to be on the road, like you get used to not knowing what's going to happen the next day or waking up and it's a new place. You get used to that. 